Hi, my name is Elizabeth Petrui, and I'm a program specialist in the Office of Elder Justice and Adult Protective Services here at the Administration for Community Living. Um, we are here today to talk about logic models and why we've asked you as our grantees to create a logic model for your project. I am joined today by my colleague, Stephanie Whittier Eliason, and I'll let her introduce herself. Hi, this is Stephanie, and I am the Elder Rights Team Lead in the Office of Elder Justice and Adult Protective Services with Elizabeth. Thanks, Stephanie. All right, so the objectives of this webinar, which is being recorded so that you can refer to it at any time as you go through your logic model assignment, is to understand both why we've asked you to create the logic model and to understand how ACL will take what you create to help tell the story of this grant portfolio. This presentation is also a companion to another presentation being completed by Dr. Susan Jenkins from ACL's Office of Performance and Evaluation. So it's important as you go through this webinar um, and as you use it to create your logic model to also reference that presentation. During this session, we'll go through the rationale behind the logic model assignment, review the APS process model, which is a high-level overview of adult protective services, review the logic model assignment, how to complete it, the different components, discuss how you'll map your logic model to that APS process model, and discuss how ACL uses this information um, once you've sent it to us. All right, why a logic model? You might be wondering why we've asked you to create it, or if you were reading through the funding opportunity announcement, why it was in there that you didn't have to create it at the time of application, but you did have to create it within the first six months. Logic models are an extremely helpful tool when it comes to thinking through how your project will work from start to finish, which is why we ask you to do it in that first six months, which is your planning period within your grant. It is an incredibly helpful tool when you think about evaluation and performance measurement. In other words, how will you know if your project has worked and how will you communicate to us that your project has worked? It's also a great visual aid when it comes to telling your project story to key stakeholders, including your leadership and other potential partners. One thing we've heard from prior grantees is how the process of creating the logic model not only helped them reimagine how they were thinking through how they would do each part of their grant project, but also how useful it was when they were briefing new leadership within their administration and other partners within the community um, whether those are nonprofits or other agencies within your state who are key players within the grant project, just to make sure everyone understands how each piece fits together within the overall project. And we also are asking you to create a logic model because we need it to tell the story of this grant portfolio overall. Your individual project is one that we've funded this year and one that we've funded in the four years that grants have been made for the enhancement of state adult protective services. And we look at these logic models cohesively over each of those four years to think about how the investments in adult protective services have improved uh, service delivery to clients and the ability for APS workers to practice across the country. We also use it when we're developing our budget requests um, and we're asked to justify a program's impact. All right, so your assignment, which you have heard of before in our kickoff call, is to create a logic model of your project using the template provided by your project officer. If you haven't received this template yet, um, ask your project officer and they'll be sure to provide it to you. Once you've created your project logic model, you will then map your logic model to the APS process model using the mapping document. That seems complicated, don't worry. We and then there's three categories across this middle section. 
the objectives and activities. So this would be the actual tasks that you set out to undertake. The output of those tasks. So what will you generate in terms of products, the number of things that you will accomplish, and what the anticipated outcomes are. So how will those activities and the outputs that you measured from the activities actually make a difference? So we will have each state create one of these for their project, um, and this will be a very useful tool for you as you think about your project holistically and also as we think about the portfolio overall. Now, some things to remember and some tips. As I've mentioned before, you'll want to reference that APS process model, which Stephanie is about to go into in a lot more detail and ask yourself which domains your project falls into within that model. Are you focusing on one particular section of the process model or more than one? For example, if you're creating or improving a program, a training program for staff, that would fall under operational support, under inputs and resources in that APS process model. And with that, I'm going to hand it over to Stephanie to talk about that. Thanks, Elizabeth. So yes, I will be speaking about the APS process model and help you all to understand how it's organized and uh, what's in there and so that you all can walk what you're doing across onto the process logic model and we can keep moving on in your assignments. So on the next slide, it's very um, detailed. This is our APS process logic model. So what does that mean? <laughs> a process logic model is a visual way to organize in a flow from left to right the way something works or a step-by-step -step process, sort of self-evident. Uh, you will receive this as an attachment or a handout. Um, you'll be able to see it in more detail. But when we're talking about doing a grant to improve adult protective services, the question is, okay, well, what, what exactly? What part of APS? Uh, we have the people who receive the phone calls and the reports. We have the people who might be doing the emergency response investigations or any of the investigations. Uh, initiating the contact versus ongoing work or case work. Um, and then we have, like, after the investigation is done, um, anything that's involved with that. And then we also have quality assurance. So what is our feedback loop? How do we make sure that um, we've done the best that we could for the person that we were working with? So this is organized to reflect uh, contact. And then the next column to the right is the input and resources. That is your staff, consultants, partners, operational support, as Elizabeth mentioned on a previous slide. Um, so what does that mean? Well, it's your policies, your business processes and procedures, how you hire people and train them, et cetera. Another input is funding. And then we also have your legal and ethical processes about protecting rights, confidentiality, et cetera. And then under activities and metrics, you have a number of different um, phases, as we mentioned, intake, investigation, and post-investigation. You'll notice in the last column on the right, it says expected results and not an outcome, because this is a process logic model, not a logic model talking about outcomes or an outcome logic model. So I don't want to say that the outcome of all of these activities will be something that I can't necessarily measure because this, uh, by what I've put in this logic model. This logic model is about a flow, a business flow and a process. So what is the result of that action? So these are the components of how APS works. Your project logic models will then talk to us about the outcome, the so what. So what after I've done the intake investigation, 
and I have my expected result, what is that outcome? So that's what your logic model is going to be doing. We wanted to give you the context of what a process model was and is and what you'll be mapping to by showing you this. So let's move on to the next slide. And, we'll, and this is where you'll see your mapping. So Elizabeth showed you and we shared with you a logic model. What are your objectives? What are your outputs? What are your outcomes? And then we have the process logic model, which breaks down all the different components of adult protective services. And so now what we want you to do is take those two and sort of match them up. So we want you to look at your logic model and identify for those activities that you're doing, where do they fall in the process logic model? And so here's an example of a state where they said, oh, under input and resources, I'm going to circle create new enhanced or create new or enhanced existing operational support. And also I fall under quality assurance because we're talking about data capacity. So you have a very distinct statement about your project in your one page logic model that's on eight and a half by 11 paper and font that you can read. And then you have your process logic model for HPS overall, which we talk about the different components, and then you just plop your state um, into those components or you circle those components for what you'll be working on. Next slide, please. So I'm going to turn it over to Elizabeth, who's then going to talk about, okay, now that you've done all this, how do you use your logic model? Thanks, Stephanie. All right. So as Stephanie said, once you've completed your logic model and mapped it onto that APS process model, you're going to send us two documents. You're going to send both your project model, your logic model specifically for your grant that ACL has funded you to complete, and you'll send us your mapping document, which shows which of those APS process model components your project is dealing with. Once we have those two pieces, we are going to combine every state's mapping document into one overall map. And this is what it looks like. And much like the APS process model, it's a little bit hard to see, but we will provide this to you as a separate document. But if you can zoom in and squint and maybe put on your reading glasses, you'll be able to see that all of these headings match that APS process model. So across the top, you can see inputs and resources, intake, investigation, post-investigation, and quality assurance. So those match to each of those process steps within your APS business flow. Within each of those categories, you can see more specific categories, subcategories. So APS staff training and education, community interagency partnerships, creating new or enhancing existing operational support. And then under each of those subcategories, you'll see a bullet that lists a state with a year in parentheses. So just by looking at this one document, you have a sense of what every project that we funded in 2015, 2016, and 2018 for in grants to enhance state adult protective services is working on within their project. And when you take it collectively and overall, you can see that there are some categories that are overwhelming, um, such as enhancing operational supports and expanding data capacity. So once we've combined all of your individual information into this overall document, it becomes easy for us to back up a claim that the majority of states are requesting these grant dollars in order to enhance operational supports, to build infrastructure, and to expand their data capacity to be able to report more to namers. It also gives us really interesting insights on what categories states are not necessarily requesting. So you can see right now only one of the states, and at this point we've funded 48, um, is working on interviews. So that's really interesting. Does that mean that interviews aren't important or that they're perfect right now? No, but 
that's just one piece of information that we have when we look at everything overall that we might not if we looked at each project individually. So once we have all of your um, logic models and the mapping documents, we will add you to this document so that we will be able to see um, as this portfolio progresses even more information. Um, we also use that overall information in order to make funding requests. And I'm gonna let Stephanie talk about this because she has the most experience actually writing those funding requests. That's the fun of my job is I get to write those. <laughs> um, so the beauty of having that large map um, that Elizabeth just walked through is that, as she said, at a glance, we can look and we can say, here's where states are struggling and they need additional support. So in one of our past funding requests that we made as an agency, the Administration for Community Living, to, to Congress um, for this grant program, we included that data or the data that we had up to, the, to that point on how states are using their funding. And as you can see here, this is a direct ex extract from um, that request. We said that we need to continue this grant program um, and here's what they've been working on and we know that there's a huge lack of support that the states have in terms of improving their infrastructure. They can't even start really um, working on intensively improving or changing the way they do practice until they can at least have the infrastructure that is necessary to do the job, let alone improve the job. And these are examples of what at the time those states were working on. And this was incredibly helpful because we are always asked, well, how do you know that the states want this? How do you know that the states need this? And what do you think they're going to use it on? What have they done before? And why should we continue it now? So your logic models, as we roll them together, they help us tell the story of the entire portfolio of programs and services that we offer within the Office of Elder Justice and APS that's specifically related to adult protective services programming. Okay, the next slide, please. So a few concluding thoughts. We're gonna kind of circle back to where we started. Um, so why do a logic model? It helps you talk about your project in very simple terms. One of the things that um, you will also be provided is uh, a listing of key terms so that you can um, better, you can use more succinct language in your descriptions and also that kind of match across the different grants. But it helps you be simple and succinct and brief. And again, it helps you track your progress and measure your success. So here's what you said you were going to do. Here's the number of things that you were going to do or produce. Here's what you hoped would be the outcome. And let's check in half a year down, halfway through our project. Have we met those metrics? Have we done those activities? Have we done more or less? Um, where do we think we are on making that change that we anticipated? And then, it also gives you insight into what might be your next step. So as you saw, when we did the logic model and we looked at all of the programs, we were then able to plan for the future because we said, hey, look, we have a lot of states who seem to need help in one particular area. So as we look to new, um, the next steps for our program, our portfolio, we are going to be looking at those logic models and we're going to say here's where the needs are or here's where there's a lot of work, here's where there's not a lot of work. And so the same will become evident with you all as you work through your projects and you're reflecting back on your logic models. It's going to help you think about, well, we, we fell a little short of what we wanted our outcome to be or we, you know, exceeded it or we had to change it. So the next time around, you know, we need to address that gap. For those states that have had more than one grant, it also helps you tell the story of all of the grants that you had. They're not just 
distinct moments in time where you have an activity and you do it and it's over. It has lasting impact and implications for your future work. So for those states that have had two grants, um, or it, hopefully into the future have more than two grants, you'll be able to show your own trajectory and your own story using the process logic model and your own logic model. So logic models are much more exciting than anyone ever imagined. <laughs> and we also hope now that you see why we asked you to complete the exercise. Now, I hope that now since you all understand why you've been asked to complete this exercise, maybe you don't have any questions at all. Maybe you're just raring to hit the ground running and start putting together your logic model. But if you have questions after watching this, reach out to your project officer. Um, or you can also contact the APS TARC at the email on the screen, APSTARC-TA at acl.hhs.gov. And between your project officer and the Technical Assistance Resource Center, we will get you sorted out so that you feel um, prepared and ready to complete this logic model. Um, so thank you so much for watching this today. Um, I also want to reiterate that this is a companion to the other webinar put together by our Office of Performance and Evaluation. And they should be viewed together and used as a resource as you create your logic model and go through the mapping exercise. Thank you again for your time. We hope you have a wonderful rest of your day and that you are excited about logic models. <laughs>